Hello and good evening. Welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I'm Ayo Deji, Makinde. President Muhammad Buhari has approved conduct of the second peer review process of the African Peer Review Mechanism. It is a self-assessment exercise on the country aimed at ascertaining the progress made in governance and social economic development. The special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adishino, announced this while briefing journalists after the Federal Executive Council meeting. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo will bring us the report later. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari has directed the military and other security agencies to do whatever it takes towards ensuring that all Nigerians whose liberty and freedom have been taken away by criminal elements be restored. The president gave the directive after receiving formal briefing from Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu on the security situation in Kebbi State. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo has the details. Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu brought the president up to speed on the recent abduction of a number of students as well as teaching and non-teaching staff of the federal government college Brini Yauri by bandits. He said the military and other security agencies, including the vigilante, have been fully mobilized and doing a great job in the search and rescue mission. Mr. President expressed sympathy to those innocent persons who are held hostage against their will by terror element and he condemned the action of all terror groups wherever they are, whether they are bandits, Boko Haram or any group that is uh, taking away the liberty and freedoms and in fact lives and livelihoods of others and he maintained the instruction he has always given to the security agencies to give their maximum best in dealing with those criminal elements. Abduction cases by criminal elements have been recurring in the northwestern sub-region, but Kebi, the land of equity, was virtually insulated until now, and Governor Bagudu is worried. This is condemnable, this should not happen, and all people of goodwill, all good people should mobilize to confront evil and evil elements and criminal elements in our society. It's not just a job for the security agencies. We have to support them. We have to mobilize and come. Since I made that statement, which I meant in every, in, by every stretch of imagination, many groups have come out to demonstrate similar support. And yesterday we have seen mobilization by the Niger state governor, and I believe we'll see more in the coming days. Nigerians should unite so that we confront, we confront criminality. Although a number of lives have been lost as a result of the incidents, many of the kidnapped victims were, however, rescued. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Twelve states in Nigeria have been identified as pilot states for the National Liquefied Petroleum Gas Expansion Plan sensitization with emphasis on rural communities. At the flag of in Abuja, overcoming the challenge of affordability was paramount for industry players. Kelvin Ebonwaye reports. A liquefied petroleum gas expansion plan as contained in the Nigerian Economic Sustainability Plan seeks to move the current 5% domestic gas usage in the country to 90% in the next 10 years. To address the challenge of affordability for ordinary Nigerians, deliberate policies of duty waivers on LPG equipment, exemption from value-added tax, among others, are currently being implemented by the government to boost investment in the sector. We're working to see that more volumes of LPG comes into the market. We can domesticate that LNG is just one aspect. MPDC is another one. I would really like to commend this administration led by His Excellency President Mahmoud Buhari, GCFR, for steering the country's oil and gas industry towards further development of the gas sector. The nationwide sensitization campaign is expected to also encompass issues of safety and environmental impact which may be associated with increase in domestic gas usage in communities. The use of LPG as a household and domestic energy source 
also offers higher calorific values and cleaner air with attendant reduction in air pollution and diseases from air pollutants. The program is being coordinated by the Office of the Vice President of Nigeria in Abuja. Kelvin Ewonwaye, NTA News. Now, in a renewed strive to curtail trans-border smuggling of petroleum products and reduce the huge cost of subsidy incurred by the federal government, a meeting of critical stakeholders have committed to change the narrative and make oil and gas industry in Nigeria better. This is in line with President Muhammad Buhari's directive to the NNPC to nip trans-border petroleum product smuggling in the bud. Lydia Samson reports. Nigeria's daily petroleum consumption has continued to fluctuate between 60 million barrels per day. In May, it rose to an outrageous over 100 million barrels. Key players at this meeting are unanimous that the nation is bleeding from the huge amount spent daily to subsidize products, ironically, not consumed in Nigeria. Our consumption of petroleum products, daily consumption has become unrealistic, is unsustainable. And yet a lot of this product is fraudulently diverted and sent out of Nigeria, smuggled out of Nigeria. We cannot continue to, to subsidize the whole of Africa and the rest of West Africa, the rest, even part of Central Africa. Already we have seen uh, significant pro uh, progress from um, uh, the height of 102 million liters per month. We are now looking at uh, less than 50 million liters in terms of uh, daily consumption. But we believe that Nigeria, you know, should not be consuming, uh, you know, more than 40 million in, in a day. Uh, Mr. President was very clear that the Honorable Minister and myself and other stakeholders must control this, including the security agencies. So there is no way we can explain this cross-border smuggling. And I believe that this approach will work, and that with the support of all the security agents, particularly the Department of State Service and the EFCC, will put this under control. We introduce automation to track products from loading point to receiving point, and up to the last mile to ensure that we pay only genuine transactions. The meeting got the commitment of Commandant General of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, DSS and Customs Service, as well as Depot and Petroleum Products Marketers Association, DAPMAN, Major Marketers Association of Nigeria, MORMAN, Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, IPMAN, Petroleum Tanker Drivers Association, PTD, and the Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association. They all agree it is time to stop working in silos and work together for greater success in this with the deadly economic crime of product smuggling. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Nigeria and the United States of America are seeking partnership to eliminate maritime insecurity in the country. This was part of discussion when the defense attache, United States Navy, Sarah Demick, visited Cross River State's governor, Ben Ayade, in Calabar. Paul Abel reports. With Cross River State connected to the Gulf of Guinea and sharing its boundary with Cameroon, the visit by the U.S. Defense Attaché to Cross River State government is timely as they share experience on tackling the movement of arms caused by the conflict in southern Cameroon and the demands of hosting refugees from that country. The bigger concerns of Governor Ben Ayadi here is how the U.S. government can support Nigeria with a military technology to combat the fight against insurgency and banditry, especially in the northern part of the country. I'm not the president of the Federal Republic and I don't intend to speak for him, but I speak as a human being, as a Nigerian, as, a, as somebody who imagines that America has got the technology to support us in our security challenges. And I'm happy to say that maybe your visit, this is the first major step. Seek to find best ways to partner with maritime agencies to address maritime crime and criminality that is of concern to both your country and to ours. So we would be happy to discuss with you in a smaller setting perhaps of uh, the number of things that the United States is accomplishing uh, and how it is that the United States is partnering with Nigerian government. Need for the U.S. to increase international trade and other economic relations with Nigeria. Invest in the state agro-industrial revolution, among others, were also brought to the fore during discussions. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NG News.
modalities put in place by the Buhari administration to tackle insecurity in the country has been commended by the Association of Professional Bodies of Nigeria, but we're quick to call for more political will and citizens' engagement. This formed part of the association's discuss at its third board meeting. Haman Jabani reports. The board meeting of Association of Professional Bodies of Nigeria, which is the third for 2020-2021 council, dwelled extensively on insecurity, Nigeria's economy, looming food crisis, another proposed strike by ASU, among other issues. The body believes that professionals in the security sector at all levels of government must be engaged while necessary resources should be deployed to fight the war. The body also wants individuals to explore civil and legal intervention to solve their problem. The board believes the earlier such warnings are heeded, the better for the country and her citizens. The Nigeria has a huge role to play making the African continental free trade agreement. Uh, we need to do a lot more. I believe that we need to improve on our security architecture. We need to do more intelligence gathering, but also we need to create some harmony. We need to defuse tensions and anger and, and unhappiness. The body expressed displeasure over the destruction of critical infrastructure in the country and urged government to engage Nigerian professionals more on national assignments. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. The FCT land swap initiative has been given a legal framework that will protect the interest of both the investors and all other parties involved in the initiative such that nobody is shortchanged. Coordinator of the Infrastructure Center gave this indication while speaking on the resumption of the program sequel to a memo presented by the FCT Minister Mohammed Musabello to the Federal Executive Council. Shuaibu Onoze Yakubu tells us more. The deficit has been one of the most disturbing socio-economic problems facing urban centers in Nigeria. One of the ways to solve the problem is to allow the participation of the private sector in joint business venture as government alone can no longer bear the burden of providing infrastructure. To this end, the FCT administration is adopting land swap as a strategy to overcome these challenges as the initiative will bridge the infrastructure deficit in the territory by swapping land with private investors who will in turn provide the necessary infrastructure. What the land swap for infrastructure model is to do is to ensure comprehensive development of the districts within a period of 10 years, however with an infrastructure component of 48 months. Uh, it also will help the administration in resolving the risk and compensation issues within the districts. FCT Minister Mohammed Musa Bilu revealed that the program has been fine-tuned to ensure development in line with the master plan in designated districts and resolve issues of compensation and relocation of people as the city grows. After a review of what has transpired over the years and also changes made, uh, the Federal Executive Council approved that we now should continue with the land swap initiative. Land swap is something that has been happening all over the world. So many countries have uh, uh, embarked on the land swap. So uh, for us and as Nigerians, uh, land swap uh, is really a good move. The land swap program will also create more jobs and employment opportunities for the teeming unemployed productive youth in the country, in Abuja, Shuaibu, Onoze Yakubu, NTA News. Lagos is our first port of call on Nationwide Today, and Hingino John Adams is standing by. Good evening, Hingino. Ayodeji. The Nigerian Navy will continue to forge necessary synergy with its foreign counterparts towards promoting safe maritime activities along the Gulf of Guinea. Flag Officer Commanding Western Naval Command, Rear Admiral Jason Bassa, said this when he received a French naval warship, Commander Bois. Born during a passage exercise in Apapa, Lagos. Adeni Itaiwo completes the report. As a maritime road for oil and gas shipping, the Gulf of Guinea, covering about 13 countries in Africa, 
is a major sea corridor enjoying the protection of many coastal nations. Lagos, home to the Nigerian Navy Western Command, has been receiving foreign naval patrol vessels or seeking collaboration to better secure the 6,000 kilometer long corridor. The arrival of Commandant Buan, an 80-meter French naval warship in Lagos, is for the same purpose and a lot more as France looks forward to improving on its military and economic bilateral relationship with Nigeria after a lull imposed by COVID-19. But they are working together uh, under the architecture of Yaoundé. Uh, it's been a process since uh, 2013 and France is a very big part of it, uh, helping all the countries to increase their ability to work together and uh, uh, to uh, share information. We are starting on hydrographic issues. Uh, to start, we are starting a, a cooperation, but we have to just uh, sit around a table and to discuss together. Chief Staff Officer Western Naval Command, Rear Admiral Hakilu Zakaria, who received the ship and its crew on behalf of the flag officer commanding, noted that the Nigerian Navy is exploring more rewarding collaboration with France in order to achieve their collective mandate in the Gulf of Guinea. Nigerian Navy has the capability to patrol this um, Gulf of Guinea, but then having collaboration with France, whose interest is within the Gulf of Guinea, is a welcome development and is something that the Navy is willing and able to partner with them. The Nigerian Navy recently acquired its first hydrographic survey ship, NNS Lano, from France. In Lagos, Adini Itaewo, NTN News. Unbridled abuse of drug by Nigerian youths, if left unchecked, presents a lot of challenges and might be connected to the spike in the level of insecurity as well as cases of mental disorder in the country. This is the reason key players are advocating more sensitization on the harmful effect of drugs, drug abuse in order to reduce demand as well as destroy the booming supply market chain, Amaka O reports. Ola Asags and Chudi Madwebuna broke the jinx of addiction to become success stories after their reintegration back into society. I was an addict for 15 years. I sold my house, I sold my cars, I sold everything I had. <laughs> the only thing I didn't sell was my blood. I started using drugs say, at the age of 12. I was addicted for 18 years. In line with the theme of the 2021 World Drug Day, share facts on drugs save lives. Facts from the 2019 drug use survey shows that about 20 million Nigerians abuse drugs. Roipnol is a drug that is supposed to be used for people who have sleep issues, but now because of its abuse, it is strictly kept under lock and key. I think the issue that we will want the public to know is the matter of stigma. The fact that we must know that it can be anyone. Because if you go to visit your friend and he laces the food, if a trusted friend, maybe jollof rice, and he has put marijuana, or the drink, he has put tramadol, and then suddenly you slip off or something, and then, or he gives a sensation that the person seems to like, the person will begin to look for it. The picture gets more scary as the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency seized about 2 million kilograms of illicit drugs worth 90 billion naira in the last five months. The insecurity we, we are, we're talking about, most of these people involved from the evidences we've been able to gather live on drugs. While the victory of Ola and Chudi over drug addiction is cheering, one can only hope that it inspires others to take the courage to break the habits. In Lagos, Samaka O, NT News. We now take a break. Nationwide will be back shortly with Chinenge in Enugu. They're about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mohamed Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support, yes, by Bank of Industry, the youth investment fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths, and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely with a degree of 
patience and time, he can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria. Pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. Although social media as a channel of communication is inherently harmless, it becomes harmful and damaging when used without discretion and thoughtfulness. Bad social media users spread rumors and fake news without verification. But good social media users stop, reflect and verify information before sharing it. Be a good social media user. Stop the spread of fake news. Verify the authenticity of your source and use social media responsibly for a better Nigeria. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, in collaboration with the National Orientation Agency. for staying on. Welcome to Enugu. As the world marks International Widows Day, key players have advocated implementation of laws to protect the rights of widows and abolish some inhuman traditions meted out on widows. Chika Ugu has more. According to research by the United Nations, there is an estimated 258 million widows around the world and nearly one in 10 live in extreme poverty. For many women, the loss of their partner is usually magnified by infringements on their human rights and dignity, as well as long-term struggle for basic needs. They are sometimes denied of their rights to inheritance and only means of livelihood, evicted from their homes, forced into unwanted marriages, and traumatized with widowhood rituals. Most times, children of widows are also affected and more vulnerable to abuse. I have a case in hand now where a widow lost her only son, and uh, the kinsman in question refused that she should come and bury her son. In fact, the idea was to take everything that belongs to, belongs to her. These women want government and all the key players, especially the National Assembly, to make laws aimed at protecting widows from all forms of injustice in the society. Trench in the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria as amended that protected a widow from a cruel, degrading treatment and punishment, torture, dignity of a person ought to be recognized, freedom of association ought to be recognized. But all of these are blatantly violated in cases of some widows. Adopted by the United Nations, the International Widows Day is observed annually on June 23 to draw attention to the voices and experiences of widows. This year's theme, Invisible Women, Invisible Problems, edges all to identify widows and make their problems visible to society. In Enugu, Chika Ugu, NTA News. In response to the damaging effects of corruption in the country, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Offenses Commission, ICPC, has launched the National Ethics and Integrity Policy. Mina Ukobasi reports that the launching held during the Southeast Zonal Dialogue was in conjunction with the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation and the National Orientation Agency. Recall that it was at the 20th Federal Executive Council meeting of 19th August 2020 that the National Ethics and Integrity Policy was approved and launched on September 28, 2020 by President Mohamed Buhari. This is to resuscitate lost values of honesty and integrity in the country. For government policies to succeed, there must be people-driven people and not government-driven. 
according to the organizers, the national ethics and integrity policy's specific objectives seek to promote human dignity, voice of participation, and professionalism. Speaker after speaker dwelt on the alarming rate of corruption in the country and urged Nigerians to purge themselves of the embarrassing trait. We are all guilty of this corruption. We have, won, we have committed one act of corruption in our offices, in our churches. Dr. Gariba Abari, DG National Orientation Agency, represented while giving an overview, said the policy draws contents from the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Participants bear their minds on the launch of the policy. The launch of this policy uh, in the southeast uh, is timely or perhaps maybe long overdue, especially if you look at uh, the corruption index in this country. The stakeholders' zonal dialogue on the implementation of the national ethics and integrity policy has already taken place in the northwest, north central, northeast, south south, and southwest zones of the country. In Enugu, Mena Adobe Kovasi, NTN News. And those are the stories from Enugu. We will now rejoin Ayodeji in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thanks. Chinere. Back here in Abuja, we told you earlier that President Muhammad Buhari has approved conduct of the second peer review process of the African peer review mechanism. The special announced this while briefing journalists after the Federal Executive Council meeting. Let's listen to Adamo Sambo's reports country to be conducted by Auda Nepat, APRM Nigeria has amongst other objectives of reinvigorating, rationalizing, and institutionalizing the African peer review mechanism in governance reforms. This is aimed at appraising to what extent the national program of action is implemented, as well as making the review process more relevant to citizens' needs, more cost-effective, and in tune with Agenda 2063 priorities and goals. The president has granted the approval that that peer review report can be conducted on Nigeria. The process is coming almost 11 years after the first peer review was conducted in 2008. As contained in the report, the second peer review will help the government to further analyze the gaps and provide solutions to some of the social economic challenges confronting Nigeria. Nigeria has made progress in several areas and on several fronts. While 10 years ago, petroleum contributed more than 70%, up, even up to 90% to our GDP, you will find that today petroleum contributes just about 45%, and non-oil products contribute about 55% to the Nigerian economy. So if Nigeria had been talking of diversification for 40, 50, 60 years. The economy can now be said to be diversified. Four thematic areas are expected to be covered in the nation's self-assessment report process, including democracy and political governance, economic governance and management, corporate governance, and socio-economic development. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Matters. Senate has passed the 2021 supplementary budget of 895.8 billion naira for second reading. The financial proposal has 722.3 billion as contribution to the Development Fund for Capital Expenditure. The significance of the budget, which has 173.4 billion as recurrent non debt expenditure, taken into account and reflected in our recommendations. It was told. Dana Air does not fly persons with disabilities at night. I didn't book night flights. You responded. You rescheduled this flight. The woman on duty insisted that it is their policy 
We want to tell the airlines that are here that enough is enough. We try everything possible to address it through the administrative way, but once it gets out of hand, we, the National Commission, are ready to take any airline to court. We never discriminate against any of, of you. We feel your pain. And we don't call you disabled. We call you reduced mobility. The matter had come up on the floor of the House on 19th May, year 2021, and revert to the committee for investigation. From the National Assembly, Dayo Ogunshola, NTA News. Adamawa State's government has empowered 105 persons living with disabilities across the 21 local government areas to enhance their economic potentials. Yusuf Jika reports that the beneficiaries are optimistic that the support will impact positively on their lives. After two months of extensive training by Adamawa State Poverty Alleviation and Wealth Creation Agency, persons living with disabilities smiled home with starter packs of different business components to enable them earn a living. The working tools include those for fashion design, shoe and bag making, GSM repairs and beads making. A cross-section of the beneficiaries appreciated government for the concern to the persons living with disabilities, promising to utilize the tools to add value to their lives. Uh, we people with disabilities say so far so good. Uh, they have promised us and they have delivered the promise. But we are able now. As we have this kind of a thing, we we'll go out and work with it and do some other business. You people have done what is expected of you because they are expected a multiplayer effect. Adam State Coordinator, Poverty Alleviation and World Creation Agency, Aisha Bawa Bello, emphasized that the agency will not relent in providing necessary skills and support to women, youth, and vulnerable in the society. In Yola, Yusuf Jika, NTN News. Next stop on Nationwide is our Joss Network Center, and Felicia is there for us. Good evening, Felicia. Good evening, Ayo Deji. Welcome to JOS. The Inspector General of Police, Al-Kali Al Baba, has loaded Plateau State Government for the huge investment in security towards complementing efforts of the federal government in the fight against crime in society. The IGP was speaking in JOS at the launch of 50 units of security compact vehicles and 200 security motorcycles procured by the Plateau State Government, Ndayan and Yang reports. The wave of insecurity witnessed in the country necessitate more proactive measures of tackling the menace. It is to enhance the security architecture that the Plateau State Government procured these 50 units of security combat vehicles and 200 units of security motorbikes. For the Inspector General of Police, the launch of the security equipment is in line with the federal government's resolve to promoting the operational capacity of the Nigerian police towards efficiency. You have also advanced the assertion that any nation desirous of security of its citizens must, of necessity, enhance the capacity of its security agencies. The determination of the Plateau State Government to secure the lives and property of the people is demonstrated through the logistic support to the police and other security agencies in combating crime. Grassroots approach to security is the best way to stop crimes and identify criminals. Consequently, we trained and deployed 529 community policing police constables to 17 local government areas of the state. They are to boost the intelligence gathering and also support the security agencies as the need arises. Key players are unanimous that collaborative efforts of the state and non-state actors is needed to nip all criminal tendencies in the board. In Jos, in Denyan, and the Abagyang, NTA News. Plateau State Government says 
The World Bank COVID-19 Intervention Fund will no doubt impact positively on the state. Governor Simon Lalong said this when he received federal government delegation on readiness assessment for the takeoff of NGKS program in Plateau State. Prisla Grumnan has details. The readiness assessment team leader said they were in the state to meet with the state steering committee of the program towards assessing the readiness of the takeoff of the World Bank assisted intervention that will provide economic stimulus to the state. It's our view, sir, that this decision affords us the opportunity to discuss with the stakeholders on how to address challenges, if any. We came with a checklist, and with that checklist, we are going to use it to check on all the readiness assessment of the state. Governor Simon Lalong appreciated the federal government for adding value to the state through the NGKS program aimed at ameliorating the effects of COVID-19, stating government's readiness to key into the program. With this kind of interventions, you can see Nigeria is moving forward. Mine is to assure you that what you have seen and all the gaps we will fill in the gaps because we value this program so that at the end of the day we will effectively deliver and uh, we will benefit. We have to say we will benefit from it. This vehicle was presented to the state government as part of preparations for the commencement of the FG Cares program in the state. In Joss, Priscilla Grumnan, NTA News. This is nationwide. The news continues shortly in Ibadan with Kemi after this break. Stay with us. The much anticipated UEFA Euro 2021 is finally here. Can Portugal defend the title they won four years ago as they face world champion France? Europe giants, Germany, Spain, Italy, and England. Catch all the action via live transmission, in-depth studio analysis, fixtures, results, updates, and lots more on NTA, Africa's largest TV network. For sponsorship and advert placement, contact Bola on 080-37044-286 or Idris on 080-34. 633-644. This broadcast is proudly brought to you by NTA in partnership with Media Business Solutions, MBS Sports. Finally, Euro 2020 is here. Enjoy all the matches live on Star Times for only 1,700 Naira monthly or 160 Naira per day. Recharge now to enjoy all the matches. Watch Cristiano Ronaldo of Portugal, Mbappe of France, Lukaku of Belgium and other top European football stars. No matter where you are, Star Times is here for you. You can enjoy all these matches on your mobile phone. Just download Star Times on app on your phone to watch all the matches for 1,000 Naira monthly or 400 Naira weekly. Recharge today with 1,700 Naira monthly or 160 Naira daily. That's right, you heard me. On Star Times, you can watch all the matches with monthly subscription of 1,700 Naira or daily subscription of 160 Naira. Terms and conditions apply. Star Times Enjoy digital life. Thanks 
for watching Nationwide and a warm welcome to Ibadan. Oyo State Governor Sheye Makinde has taken some measures towards strengthening the scope of security in the state. This is to further combat the rate of crime in the state. Correspondent Kayode Oladoshu has details. In a bid to improve the security structure and combat crime and criminality in Noyo State, the state security network, codenamed Amatekun, has received a boost with the inauguration of 12-man board saddled with the responsibility of governing the affairs of the agency. We believe that with the inauguration of this board, we will see even more visible action in securing Noyo State. Especially in the area of fostering relationships between Amatekun, Oyasis, and similar security uh, network agencies in our neighboring states. While appraising the call for diligent exercise since inception, Governor Mackenzie charged the governing board to ensure that the security outfit sustains standard level of operations. Security is our collective responsibility. It's not just for the government. It's not just for the governor alone. So everybody needs to come on board and play their own part. The governing members include the chairman of the agency, retired Brigadier General Kunle Togun, Unkwetu of Ijeru, Oba Samuel Olada Poyediron, representatives from the Free Senatorial Districts and representatives of federal security agencies. In Ibadan, Kado Ladushu, NTA News. And to education matters now, candidates seeking admission to higher institutions in the country through the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, JAMB, are having smooth experience in Oyo State. Correspondent to Inka Omole says, apart from the initial hitch reported on the first day, the conduct of examination has been impressive. In their quest to gain admission into tertiary institutions of their choice, these youths must sit through the hurdles of the Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME, as one of the prerequisites for their education aspiration. This informs their convergence across various accredited centers in the nation for the computer-based test. Aside strict compliance to the rules and regulations guiding the conduct of the examination, they also observed protocols of COVID-19 in centers visited. There's no any lack of anything. They provide everything for, for us. All of us just face our work. Some of the system has problems. No, my own doesn't have any problem. The initial challenge of system and functioning became a thing of the past after Saturday. There's a system in place that captures everybody that's sat for the exam. So those that had genuine reason, the system will save them as against those who don't have any reason. So those who have genuine reason are going to be contacted as to when they're going to rewrite the exam. Although some centers were cancelled by the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, for some obvious reasons, it is expected that candidates at these centers will be given another opportunity in Ibadan. Oje Yinka Omole, NTA News. And that concludes Nationwide from Ibadan. Nationwide continues in Abuja with Ayodeji. Thanks, Kemi. Moving on on nationwide, federal government's strive to improve education in the Niger Delta is yielding success. This was highlighted at the convocation lecture of the Western Delta University, O'Hara. Ismail Musa has details. Education is said to be the bedrock to socioeconomic development. That is why government and the private sector are focused on transforming the sector through various investment. The combined convocation for 2017, 2018 and 2019 session at the Western Delta University of Ogara helps on using education to tackle societal challenges. Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Cecilia Okobia, charges graduates to be the nation's desired agents of change. You must therefore promote, protect and guide the name and image of your alma mater. For the Dean of Social and Management Sciences of the University, quality and impactful education is a right for all. The solution to the restructuring problems and all that that is bedeviling this nation 
is in academics. The, those are the aims of affairs, just simply need to adopt it. That's all. Education these days, it's a very tasking one. Um, the fact that they were able to get to this point and graduate today, we must applaud them. 652 students graduated with different grades in various fields. Ismail Musa, NTA News. Employers in Nigeria, particularly those requiring the services of lawyers, have been told to pay great attention to what court lawyers can do to strengthen the nation's justice system. This position came from experts and resource persons at the opening of the annual NYAC Legal Aid Workshop, which held in Abuja. Femi Okeowo has the story. The annual core legal aid workshop is the National Youth Service Corps way of strengthening the capacity of its legal departments across the country and empowering youth core lawyers, particularly in the area of representing the weak and indigent before the court of law. Director General of the NYSC said this area of focus is significant enough to influence the nation's justice system positively and called on employers to show interest in the duties of their core lawyers. The Legal Aid Council and the Correctional Service rely so much on the service of the core member. Without the core member, they will find it very difficult to, to operate. Also because the core members are also learning, they are also being trained and uh, it's a two-way traffic. Experts were brought in to talk on the topic examining the laws regulating practice of ICT with particular reference to data protection regulations. It is therefore expected that this topic will stimulate profound discourse on the various regulations guiding the processing of data in Nigeria as it applies to the scheme. The world saying that knowledge is power is as good as information is power. And that statement has become more glaring and profound in recent times. This is the sixth annual legal aid conference of the call in Abuja, Femi Okewu, NGA News. Joint Health Sector Union and the Nigerian Medical Association are yet to agree on actual amounts of hazard allowance for health workers. The Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngigi, while briefing journalists after the closed door session, said progress has been made to finalize the hazard allowance despite economic challenges. One of the parties have uh, agreed to uh, the government position. We asked the other party to go and dot the T's and I in their own recommendation so that the government will also go back and see what we can do within the ambit of uh, the proposals being given by them. The minister is hopeful the groups will come to common terms when they reconvene in the next two weeks. Immunization response to fight polio outbreak in Imo states is receiving wide acceptance from rural communities. Reina Obasi, who monitored the exercise, reports that the impact is evident in the number of children who have so far been immunized. Following news of recent outbreak of poliomyelitis in some states, the Imo state government is taking precautionary measures to protect children from zero to five years. Hence, the house-to-house -house and school-to-school -school exercise to immunize children. At the Owari Municipal Council Health Center, a good number of mothers presented their babies for immunization. Some of them are optimistic that with the exercise, the safety of their young ones from deformity is guaranteed. I'm going to follow due procedures for them to get whatsoever they need for their health. I'm very happy because my baby is among, among the children that is taking the vaccine today. This is to help the baby and prevent polio and uh, prevent any other diseases. Health workers who also visited other centers noted the impressive response to the immunization, which they attributed to massive awareness embarked upon before the commencement of the exercise. For, for this special uh, program, uh, we equally mobilize, we write letters to churches, schools, because Imo State is a nearby state to Abia State. So the federal government decided that we should immunize children under five years. 
by this immunization, it is expected that child mortality and deformity will be tackled to the barest minimum. In Oweri, Rina Obasi, NTA News. The emergence of COVID-19 affected social and economic lives of the nation as it brought negative impact on lives and livelihood of the people, especially women and girls. To cushion this effect, Women Development Center embarked on the training of women and youth across the six geopolitical zones of the Federation. Basi Ita Ipan was at a graduation of participants in Abuja. Women Development Center saddled with the responsibility of sensitizing and empowering women and youth with skills has embarked on training to enable them contribute meaningfully to the economic development of the nation. One of such is a post-COVID-19 sensitization and training for innovation and empowerment in ICT for women and youths. This is the era for entrepreneurship. It's no longer white collar job. It's no longer the banking. It is the season for entrepreneurship. That is why the government is encouraging everybody to go into entrepreneurship. You should be self-employed. We taught a lot of things that we can actually start with just a little that we have to empower ourselves. And it has been a wonderful journey. The program is carried out in the six geopolitical zones of the country. Basi Taikban, NTA News. Onslaught against drug abuse and cartels is gaining stakeholders' support at different levels to stop youth from illicit drug consumption and trafficking. NTA's current affairs program, Tuesday Live, offered the platform for them to discuss and engage the public on consequences and the impact on the society. They know they have to contend with the NDLEA, so it's easier for them to quit the trade because wherever they come, we'll be there, they'll meet us. Chairman National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Brigadier General Mohamed Bubu Marwa, speaking in a language one, drug users and peddlers seem to understand. And that is coming against the prevalence of drug abuse and trafficking in Nigeria, which is said to have eaten into the social fabrics of the nation. This the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency says must stop. We are now an intelligence-based organization. We don't just hit and miss. We do calculated work, and I believe Nigerians have seen our work of recent. The amount of seizures, those who try to export sometimes try to dodge out of Lagos, believing that, oh, Lagos International Airport is hot. NDLA will get us. They go around and try to appear in Kano or somewhere. They still have to contend with us because we'll be there. We will be facing already by 2030 an 40% increase of drug users. That means for Nigeria, for example, that from the 14 plus million that we have at the moment, we're probably going to be around 20 million. Discussions on NTA's Choose a Life believe setting targets and collaboration among stakeholders will be the magic to save the country from the menace. We also need to look at how the interventions we need to do to stop it. Because if we stop using the drugs, if the young people stop using the drugs, then there will be no market for it. The, the supply is where the cartels are making a lot of money, systematically destroying the mental health of our youths. It's worrisome because even when you want to talk about treatment, the government would need to put so much. Despite advancing over the battle line drawn against drug abuse and illicit substance, discussions say everyone must play a role to achieve the desired results. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. And that's nationwide. Thank you for watching. I'm Ayo Deji. Makinde, please remember to connect with the NTA and stand against rape and rapists. On behalf of the entire production crew, good evening.